get my thoughts together here a little bit. And really what I'm trying to do right now is remember a conversation that I had over 30 years ago with uh, one of my friends and, and teammates, teammates, trying to explain to him a little bit more about avoiding split brain syndrome by making the right decisions up here and just happen to get shape on the 13. So in other words, if I wouldn't want to make both these balls in that pocket, I'm going to shoot the one, draw back, and then shoot the 13. Duh, right? The problem that I have very often had is my brain will get split between make the one and get shape. And depending on what the hell happens, I mean, I can end up missing the one. I can get perfect shape, and but I missed the one because of the split brain syndrome. So I tried to I tried to eliminate playing shape for the 13 and take care of all that up here. What what am I going to do to to get that shape? Because right up here I can be relaxed, right? Well, to get that shape, duh, I'm just going to hit it low and draw back. Okay. Now that I've made the decision I'm going to hit low, I don't have to play shape for the 13 anymore. And I won't play shape for the 13. I will just happen to get it. And I can go back to my primary goal, which is put this one in. And just because I have the bottom on the ball, I'm just going to happen to get shape. So that's what I was explaining to him is that. We'd add a little bit of the chaos going on up here and just try to just get it whittled down to the primary goal, which is usually put the ball in, and then just happen to do whatever else you're trying to do, get shape for the 13 in this case. I think I did a fairly decent job of explaining that to him back then. But he asked a follow-up question that I hadn't been ex expecting. And I probably should have, but, but I didn't. So his question was, do I then take it one step further and in this case, make the proper decisions up here. So I just happen to make the 13. In other words, do I back my focus up even further? Whereas, you know, in, in the first example, I, I, I skipped, or I, I didn't think about playing shape. My, my goal was to put the object ball in. Now, what if I take the goal of putting the object ball in away? And I try to get rid of that. And so I make the decisions up here that I'm just going to just cut the 13, just a teeny tight touch to my right or to my left. And then at that point, as long as I do that right, I can take the worry or thought of putting the object ball in out of my head. He asked me, do I take it that one step further? And I said, no, I, I don't do that. And so his question was, well, why the hell not? And trying to come up with an answer to that. You know, I honestly, and I didn't know then, and I still really don't know. Um, a part of me needs to have that, that goal of the ball going in. The goal has to be, in my mind, put the algebra ball in. I can make other things secondary to that. But I can't make I can't make putting the odds ball in secondary to stroking straight, for example, or, or hitting on the proper shot line, for example. That there's too much of a disconnect there for me. In let's say 99% of the cases, there's too much of a disconnect. for me to reliably go, okay, I'm going to hit the, the ball on this shot line with this English and this speed, and the object ball just happened to go in. But every now and then, every now and then, that's exactly what happens, is I'm just shooting, and I'm not even really paying attention to stroking straight. I'm not even pay, really paying attention to where am I hitting the ball? How hard am I hitting the ball? Whatever. I backed it up even further than that. And if you back it up far enough, then that's what I consider to be dead stroke. 
district, you're not thinking about anything. It's just, it's just all happening for you. It, it's like magic. Any of you guys watching this that have ever been in dead stroke, you probably know what I'm talking about. You might not have described it that way or heard it described that way. You may have a better way to describe it. But for me, that's pretty good. I could, I could just get on the shot while I'm up here and still mentally relaxed and shit like that. And then at that point, the inner pro player takes over and does everything else. Just happen to make the 10, just happen to get shape on the six in this case, just happen to do all this stuff, but not really happen to try. And I've backed up all these little millions of little goals, millions is probably an exaggeration, all these little goals, back them up, back them up, until it, really there's nothing. There's nothing left anymore. Because while I was up here relaxed and able to see the angles, then I'm able to go, okay, cool. And then, hey, wow, the, the 10 just happened to go in. Hey, wow, I just happened to get shape off the 6. If you do that often enough, string it together often enough, then you're in dead stroke. You don't have to aim at anything. You don't have to play shape for anything. It just happens because you're in a proper frame of mind to be able to do it. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And it was a conversation that, you know, it wasn't what I was expecting because he asked, he asked that question, can you take it another step? And, and I thought about it, yeah, you could take it all the way back to dead stroke if you want, and if you can do it, if you can do it reliably, you know, if I could do it reliably, I wouldn't be down here. How many times have I said something like that? If I could reliably drop into dead stroke, that'd be pretty cool, I think. But it hasn't happened yet, not on a reliable basis. Oh, there's a tit there. Do you notice that? Um, so, I don't, anyway, the other thing that I want to talk about. was there's another conversation with the same person. And this is one of the first lessons that I ever got in, in inner pool player stuff. And so the first one that I told to this guy. And the shot that I used to demonstrate was pretty much my ceremonial first shot that you all might have seen me do in some of my unboxing. I have this shot. A player has this shot, and they've been playing pool for longer than maybe like 30 seconds. They know if they're going to be able to put this four ball in or not. And, you know, the beginners and such, they have to be down here and aiming it and, and watching their stroke straight and all that. They may have to be doing that kind of stuff. But the point of it is, at a certain point, it feels right, and then you pull the trigger and the ball goes in. As you get more and more experience, and you, you can take on tougher and tougher shots, you're, you're still doing the same thing. Is it, I'm just trying to explain this. Again, over 30 years ago, I can aim this nine in the corner. But what I'm really doing is I'm seeing if it feels right. Does it feel like it's going to go in? Is my inner pull player satisfied with this that the ball is going to go in the hole? That's the whole point of aiming. It's really it's the whole point of practice strokes and aiming and everything. It gets to the point where you know my inner pull player is happy with the setup and the situation, and then you can put the ball in the hole. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Um, so the, the next phase of that, I guess, and I've done a video about 
about aiming is it is not it's not like the secret of pool it's a way to confirm that the shot feels right or that the shot doesn't feel right if, if I want to cut this nine in there again and try to make it but I'm like this it doesn't matter all the aiming in the world I feel like doing I'm not gonna make the damn ball so you gotta get you gotta get the aim and all that. So it looks like the ball is gonna go in. Your inner pool player is happy and can't make the nine. Never mention I hate pool. It's so hard to talk about well anything to, for me, but inner pool player stuff. It's so hard to talk and therefore you know give a little bit of my brain over to my mouth for talking. It's, it's hard to talk and let go at the same time. It's very difficult, very difficult. So anyway, you can go at a certain point and you can not aim. Because if you've been playing long enough, if you're in the right frame of mind, all that, um, you can do all that up here. You can do all that up here and go, oh, okay. And your inner pool player is happy, and you can tell right off the bat that your inner pool player is happy. So there's no sense in doing, no sense in getting down here and aiming this damn 12 in and doing my, you know, prescribed number of practice strokes, whatever that is. There's no sense in doing any of that because all that is to convince my inner pool player. That the shot's going to go in, that everything's cool, and the shot's going to go in. Ways you've said and done in a lot of cases, but I really do believe that's the case. I really do believe that's true. Is, is I don't need to aim this 12 or anything if I'm in the right frame of mind. If I'm in the right frame of mind, and if I'm not talking to the camera, and if I do everything correct up here. It's tough to do everything correct up here. Can't be getting lazy with it. You just go, well, I'm standing in the right vicinity of where I need to be. I'm twisted kind of in the right. No, you have to be right. And, and you have to be in the right frame of mind to recognize the fact that you're right. I'm not any more correct down here than I should be up here. It's kind of the point, I'm saying. And if not, it doesn't kill you to do this in most cases. Uh, but I have such a problem with that corner, man. It's a cat. You can't see her. She's smelling stuff. That always makes me nervous, wouldn't it? When the cats walk around smelling stuff. Like they're getting ready to do something disgusting on my floor. Anyway, so I said most of the time aiming doesn't hurt. It's just most of the time it's not necessary if you know what you want. But sometimes it can hurt. And I've touched on that several times. I think I've even touched on it in this video. Is that I can be wrong. I can be out of the line I need to be on to make this five. But sometimes being down here and just going through these motions of aiming and sawing my thumb off with practice strokes and all that, I can end up convincing my inner pool player that I'm right. Or I can, by doing all this, my inner pool player can give up, say, all right, screw you, you just shoot yourself. Th these kind of things happen to me well, well, way too often, is by trying to aim a ball in, trying to make sure it's going in, sometimes I do more harm than good. A lot of times I'm better off just, if I can do it, making sure that I'm right, bend over, shoot the shot. You can't make a ball in that corner. We've established this, correct? We'll switch corners. Ah, ah, ah. That's why you have six boxes on the pool table. What I don't want to do 
is be wrong, come down here and, and still continue to be wrong but not really notice it. I really have no, I really do nothing down here than, than doing this stuff that may be convincing myself that I'm right when I'm really wrong. I don't know if that just made any sense. The whole point is to do everything correct up here, including giving a shot to the inner pool player. I was really trying to draw that. Can you believe that shit? Sometimes I have zero draw stroke. Sometimes it's decent, but then I miss the ball. Anyway, I think I'm done with this video. It was actually supposed to be two different videos. But it's just one long ass rambling mess. Later.